Here we go. We are live, folks. This is the legendary Si Morales. Uh, it's an honor. Esai. To... Esai, thank you. I was going to ask you. You took the words right out of my mouth as far as the question. I was going to ask you the question. And uh, Esai, first of all, welcome to Zenny62 on YouTube. I'm going to do something. I'm going to fire up the watch page real quick. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go straight in. I'm not even going to do that just out of respect for your time. Uh, we're just going to go right into it because you just got off the well, plane. Well, uh, do what you got to do, brother. Do what you got to do. All right. I'm going to go and I'm using the YouTube Live Mobile. And because of YouTube oh. Live Mobile system, it doesn't allow you to preset the page. Oh. So as a result, you have to go to the page. There you are. And I want to tweet this out real quick. And as it opens up, we find that the stream is, um, hmm, it says the stream is bad. That's odd. Um, no, why that is. I'm just going to go, you know why? I'm going to go, I'm going to play it through because it's recording. Um, we're going to go to view to the watch page. And there it is. Spin, spin, spin. Now it's the connection issue. I don't believe this today. Ah, oh, no, no. Got it back. It's here. Yes. All right. We are here. One thing it's here. We're here. Yeah. And, now it's and now, two for the year four or so. Yeah. Now it's now we're here. Okay, fine. And we're here. And I'm going to tweet this out. And once I get this tweeted out, we'll be to lift off. And there... It is right there. I have sag. I have hashtag sag after preset. So there that is. That tweet is out. And we're ready. We're ready to go. So let's go for it. Welcome to Zenny62 live on YouTube Friday night. How are you? I know. You're absolutely exhausted. <laughs> and if I were to tell you what I've been doing, my voice is about to break up. <laughs> I'm actually to sound like I feel your pain. I sound like Bill Clinton right now. <laughs> hey, President Clinton. My gosh, it's uh, great to have you on the show. <laughs> whereas, whereas, stop here. <laughs> whereas one of my viewers says, Richie, one of my all time favorites. <laughs> but, uh, that was a good one. Yeah, so something was. You you have had a 106 credits, but the biggest challenge of your life, arguably, right now is you're running for president of sag after the Screen Actors Guild Union. Tell my viewers who may not understand, but obviously know you, know your characters, feel like they've grown up with you as I do, the importance of sag after in, in your, not just in your life and the actors and act, actors, but also their lives as well. Yeah, yeah well, you know, sag after or really it started out as SAG, Screen Actors Guild, was a union that was formed basically um, out of proving a lie. In the 1930s, uh, management, the owners of the studios and such had said that uh, if all actors from top to bottom didn't take a 50% pay cut, there'd be no business. They'd have to shut their doors and you know, nobody would work and nobody wanted that. And a lot of people felt for that and, and uh, thought folks were ready to take, you know, bite that bullet yet again, because it was the depression. But some actors actually uh, were rather um, aware and awake and conscious and realized, wait a minute, people aren't going to the opera. They're not spending a lot of money in, in, in dinners, you know, in dinners. They're, they're not vacationing. If anything, if they're traveling, they're traveling through the movies. They're going to the movies more than ever. So they realized, wait a minute now. Uh, we don't buy it. We don't buy it. And they... they put their lives and careers on the line because it, it, it was like that. I mean, you know, we're talking about the 30s, okay? Right. You know, waiting for lefty, you know, gangster, Capone. I mean, it, those are the days people didn't play. And when they played, they played for real, you know, for keeps. And so the industry, uh, you know, was uh, trying to pull a fast one. And uh, people like uh, Jimmy Cagney and others got together and said, listen, you know, we're doing well right now, but we may not always be doing well. And if we don't stand up for each other, who will? We do what we do as actors, and I'm speaking now myself, because we have an innate 
drive, a desire. It, it doesn't make sense. Somebody wakes up one day and says, how am I going to be financially successful? How am I going to be stable? I got it. I'll be an actor. No. <laughs> Not gonna happen. It's it's something that comes from within, and it's and it's a creativity. It's an art. It's a you know not everybody takes it to the level of an art, but what we do, we would do for free if you let us. The key is don't let us. Why? Because we need to make a living. We need to create a floor. What the union does, it creates minimums. Why? Otherwise, we would undercut each other for the job until we'd be a hobbyist union. You know, we, there would be nothing to do. You know, you'd pay to get into a movie for the exposure. And that's not how you create an industry. As a matter of fact, when we as actors, uh, when our forefathers and sisters and mothers um, created the Screen Actors Guild, not only did the industry not shut down, it ushered in the golden age of filmmaking because people could then might have to work two or three other jobs to support their acting habit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. It became a craft that you can dedicate yourself to. Mm -hmm. You understand? We are the ghosts in the machine. We are what brings their products to life. We, if we're good, if we are worth our, you know, our, 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 our earning, we make you care. Mm -hmm. We make you cry. We make you laugh. We make you get mad. We make you feel pride. I mean, with a great actor, actress, whatever you want to call it, you know, filmmaker, because it's all we're part of a team now. We understand that. Will take you places you wouldn't normally go by yourself. And that's something about art that's intangible. So you can't treat that like somebody, oh, just because everybody thinks they can act, that then we're going to pit everybody against each other so man, eh, i can pay you five dollars to, to do a job no it doesn't work that way we have needs and we created our our ancestors you know our, our forebears um created provisions protections you know you go to the bathroom you have a, a private dressing room who would have thought you know yeah. in the beginning of your career you take a corner and you get dressed in front of or next to other actors and actresses because there's that kind of camaraderie but that's in college that's in high school you know there comes a point where the human dignity the need for human dignity takes over and, and you need your own space to create to pray to, to prepare to do your thing where not 10 people looking at you going, oh, that's what you do. Do you know what I mean? Yes, sir. We all do yeah. that. So the union was formed to create a basic bottom, a minimum, that in certain cases become your maximums, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do. We take care of each other because the best way for me to take care of myself is to take care of those around me. All for one, one for all. That's the, that's the spirit of unionism. Now, does that mean we can hold the industry hostage and demand outrageous salaries? Absolutely not. We can't exist without each other, which means we need our industry bosses, our partners. Really, it's, you know, it's a partnership. They need us. We need them. They hire us. We need them to make money so that they can hire us. So this is not like a, it's not about taking advantage it's about making sure that we're not taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. How, I don't know if I if I described it enough. No, in, I think in, you in did because I mean, not not to at the risk of digressing for a moment. You know, my mom here is eighty two, and we mm. watch a lot of the classic movies. We've seen you on Blue Bloods and a number of great great productions on television, and you're royalty. You know, you are modern royalty, but also. You are the, you. you. we were talking off camera for a bit about, you know, what's going on in Washington and everything else. And, you know, you can bet that you all as actors will be at the forefront of giving us those stories that help us exact pro positive change, you know. So, no, I mean, what you all do is exceptionally powerful. And, I, and not only that, uh, I don't want to veer off track, but I've talked to people like Vince McKay and other actors because I cover the Oscars, the 9100 Stars Oscar, Oscar party and a number of different uh, events through the years. And what I gain an appreciation for is how new media has impacted, impacted what you do, right? And so on. And I understand that among other things, that's what's driving you to run for president of SAG-AFTRA. And then there's this controversy that you've come right in the middle of. And I want you to talk about in your words rather than me you know, trying to 
lead you that way because I think <laughs> that would be that would be a disastrous error. I think, but I want to hear you. Oh, go ahead. So lead, lead, lead the witness. <laughs> what the heck is going on, and who is mining the store at SAG AFTRA that you would have a controversy regarding? I don't want to use a term where someone would say, "Hey, you're defaming my character." That's why I'm trying to be very careful here. But what? Give us a picture of what's happening here. That that's motivating you to, you know, to fight back. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I call myself a peaceful warrior because I do believe that um, the utmost desire is peace, peace of mind, uh, knowing that you have a career that you've contributed to your whole life that. You have a pension you've contributed to your whole life so that those days that come ahead where you're no longer able to earn the same, you've put something aside. You're not going to become a burden on your child or children. You know, that that means a lot to me. I come from an era where you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the great things that this union has provided so many of our members. You know, a, a healthy pension plan. And um, the situation right now, I find, is that we have a culture that is not doesn't lend itself to democracy it centralizes power it puts it all at top we merged with another union that traditionally was undercutting us that was and, um, hint, hint, yeah hint, we went yeah. long to, to after mm -hmm. you know i have no problem with after until my own sister union is making it impossible for me to to grow uh, our salaries our wages hang on a second you know but we rewarded them with a bailout of sorts. Mm -hmm. We did not get told the truth. I was against the merger because I knew that we were getting shafted, in my opinion. That we were becoming something bigger, which would become like a bigger bus for more people to be thrown under. Hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? I do. And a lot of different types of members, and their needs are specific. You know, uh, when we were just SAG, it was... Actors, performers in general, actors, stunt personnel, and background actors as well. So, you know, we merged. But even background actors felt like they got the short shift, you know, that no big star was going to go walk up, you know, uh, you know, walk the picket line for, for folks that they didn't recognize. You know, it, it just, we, we needed to come together, and I felt like we were going to get bigger. Mm -hmm. The union is bigger. The salaries get bigger, their pensions get bigger, and the actor and the member gets less and less. Mm. And that's what I felt was the problem. But nonetheless, it merged. By hook or crook, it merged. And so now we're not fighting that battle anymore. We're, my attitude is, okay, we're merged. Let's make the best out of it. Let's make sure that this union works for all of its sectors. You know, we have... Radio, we have recording artists, we have broadcasters, new, uh, serious news broadcasters, more entertainment uh, broadcasters, we have dancers, we have uh, musicians, I mean, actors, uh, motion capture performers. We've got a lot of people to look after and make sure that they don't get thrown under the bus so that one group gets what they want. We end up, you know, sacrificing or at the expense of another. Mm -hmm. That's something I think is unfair. But since we're here, we want to make sure we go into these negotiations with the best possible hand. So to make a long story short, our faction, Membership First, has not had the board, the control of the board, or enough votes to do what they've wanted for a long time. So instead of just fighting and fighting and fighting, we said, you know what? These negotiations are coming up. Let's give them what they want. What do they want? Because I think it's more important than just that we look good at their expense, that the union gets a good contract. So what can we do to help them? Well, we voted with them in areas where we gave them a unanimous uh, situation so that our chief negotiating officer, our NED, walked in there with a unanimous board behind them. That gives you strength. Otherwise... If there's any shortcomings in the contracts, guess who gets blamed? We do. Oh, well, they were against us. They were holding us back. Oddly enough, when our folks were in power, we got hamstrung. We got cut at the knees. We couldn't even go for our own strike authorization. People were so afraid. You know, and, and instead of going for revenge, let's give them the best hand. Now, they could have come back with a really good, unassailable contract and 
we would have been in a tough place. And then maybe I wouldn't have had to run. Maybe I wouldn't have to do this because if you're doing your job, I can go back to being a father and an actor and doing my thing, you know, staying in shape, you know, playing tennis, doing what the things that make me healthy and happy. But right now, what makes me healthy and happy is knowing that I'm stepping up to the duty that I have to do, which is use whatever experience I have, whatever know-how I have, whatever people skills I have to the service of this union. Because I'm not here to look for um, revenge. I'm here to figure out how these folks that have been at odds with us for years and years and years now, how we can find a way to work together because it doesn't work when we're when we're fighting. So... What do we try to do? We try to get a minority report in the boardroom. Minority report means that if there's a one picture that the union and, and the officers are putting up, the majority, mm-hmm. well, what's the other side of the view? We want to help increase communication. We want members to be more aware of what's going on. There's a lot of voter apathy. Like Members are not voting in the numbers that they could or should be. Now, they've always been Why at is 20%. That? Is, that, is, that, is that a microcosm of what's going on in the country? I think so. Wow. I, and it, also, it's another thing, you know, if I may be a little um, brash here. You don't join this union because you're necessarily aware of the importance of solidarity. People join this union because they have to. Because most work is under union contracts. So they're just joining the unions. Okay? They can make themselves some union money. Okay? It's, it's, yeah. it's a real living. And unfortunately, they, they get jaded. You know, I don't know if it's the party politics. I don't know if it's the fact that, you know, they just don't understand the history of the union. They don't realize how much their participation means to us. Because if we walked in there with more than 50% of our members voting, that sends a message. That sends a message to the folks across the table. If we walk in there with a strike authorization, meaning not that we're going to strike, but we already have been pre-authorized to strike. If things get that bad, then, you know, we mean business. And that that's all. That's all we want. Again, we've been maligned. So to answer your question, which I've, you have to forgive me, I've not slept in forever. Oh, I understand. Um, mm-hmm. But we've been maligned. Like, I'll tell you one thing right now, board service. I'm on the national board, which is extremely important. And there's the local board, of which I'm uh, first vice president. Mm-hmm. And then our committees of which I've done so many, you know, I, I don't look back and go, okay, what have I done so I could throw that in everybody's face? I've done a lot, 17 years on this union. Anytime I can, when they ask me to show up someplace, even if it was, there was a car wash like seven or eight years ago. I went to a place, a car wash that was, being, that was going on strike because we supported their job action. I'll go here, there, I'll, I speak to the AF of LCIO at their like 75th anniversary, and I gave a rousing speech. You know, this is what I do. I communicate. Mm-hmm. I get together. I build bridges. I'm not into burning them, okay? I understand the value of relationships and respecting the people that you deal with. So I'd like to do that in that boardroom. I'd like to find the talent that has been arrayed and misinformed against us and say, no, despite our differences... I think you mean well, and I think you have a lot of talent, and I think we should just start fresh right now. What can you do for all of us? That's the kind of mentality that I want to bring to this union, because the biggest problem is, and maybe it's both sides, I'll go there, but I think we have folks that have been misinformed about who we are, that have been told out-and-out lies, blaming um, you know, the 2000 strike, on our faction mm-hmm. when we were a minority of the of the negotiating committee and it was a unanimous vote not only to strike to get the authorization and to continue the strike but people forget and these newbies come in and they're filled with so much misinformation about us that they see us and already they're they're at odds so we have a culture of mistrust and that's got to stop and that's what I'm dedicated to doing, to, to not remembering all the grudge. I mean, look, I can forgive. I won't necessarily forget. Mm-hmm. But I know that it's more important to start new and to see what we can do for each other as opposed to what we've done to each other. You see what I'm trying to say? There's a difference. Absolutely. There. Absolutely. Hey, I'm curious. I believe the last near strike was 2013, if I'm not mistaken, in there. Uh, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? 
with what came out of 2013 or did that lead to the problem we have we're talking about right now I'm not 100% sure I know what you're talking about which strike because we have, we have so many different contracts. I mean, just recently, we almost went on strike to, to, for NPR, but right. thank goodness. There was, a, there, got, was, there was the one regarding, uh, I believe the new media issue was like 2013 or 14. It was, a, it was it didn't it was a picket walk, but it didn't lead to a strike. It wasn't like yeah, out no. and out. Right, right. It didn't out, out and out. But uh, there was some issue as to how, I believe, if memory serves, new media was going to be handled. And, uh, but I don't recall how that played out. Right. Okay. Let me just give you a snatch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we have uh, historians in our union that uh, they know every detail better than I would. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is this, that there's a trend and there's a trend of management telling us that goes way back to when I first started even paying attention in the eighties. Okay. We have a negotiation. We're trying to keep up with the cost of living, and we hear there's something called VHS, mm -hmm. home video, mm -hmm. which then turned to DVD. Well, home video market. Well, we don't know what that is. We don't know that you know we could even make any money on this. And there was cable. You know, we, we don't know who watches cable. <laughs> right? I remember that. Yeah. That's how it's forty five percent of all of our, our work is basic cable and did not get anything in the residual structure increasing on that. That's been terrible for a while. But wow. they keep saying they don't know how to make money. And then when new media came like internet and all that and streaming, we don't know how to make money. And it's the same old story. Listen, work with us now, give us a deal. We'll get seventeen free reruns, you know, before we pay a residual and then when we figure out how to make money, we'll we'll revisit it. Well, what happens is that it never gets revisited. As a matter of fact, the nerve of some of these folks to say it's off the table. The next negotiation, we can negotiate, but that you can't. No, no, that's off the table. So that's wait, wait, wait. Let me get some, the, let me get something straight. They say to you, "Okay, we'll work it out down the road," and then down the road comes and they take it off the table. That is a bait and switch. I mean, if I've ever heard of one worse, in my life. It's worse than that. In my opinion, that's not good faith negotiation. No, it's, it's just not. Not. not at all. I'm a person of my word. And I have a, there's a big show that I did. And um, I took a, a pay from my quote. Who, by the way, quotes used to be something you built up in your life. The more experience you had, mm -hmm. the more you worked, the higher you, you, you paid. You more you were more recognizable. Oh, that guy, that person's a, you know, he or she's a 25-year actor. They're not going to get what a... 25 month actor is going to get you know I'm like you you build your quote now it's gotten to the point where they ask for your quotes not so that they can meet it and give you a little more but so that they don't go over it so that they go okay what's your quote okay we'll give we'll offer half of that and then we'll negotiate somewhere in between huh. so your price doesn't ever really go up it kind of like it stays out unless you have the lottery of a hit you know mm -hmm. it's hard to build a quote anymore and I think that if people ask for your quote, they should be prepared to meet it. Another thing I find is a big problem, and I'm, I know I'm digressing, but mm -hmm. it's just coming to my head stream of consciousness, is if you can afford a $20 million actor, why are you telling people that they can only get minimum scale plus 10% for their actor? You can afford a $20 million. Well, here's the problem. Um, Joe Blow, who's huge now, took all their money. We don't have enough money. Well, no, he didn't take my money. That money is his or hers because they are worth it to yeah, you. Yeah. Because without their involvement, you can't get financing. Wow. But it's come to the point where now, if you're not a huge name, well, you know what? We don't need you. So, you know, take it or leave it. There's 10 other actors behind you. Yeah. And so now you're practically paying the difference between what you should be getting paid and what you're getting paid. To work in a film with a big star because it's a Joe Blow movie. You want, hey, Joe Blow movies usually do really well. Well, guess what? There's no guarantee. No. I mean, look, <laughs> look, at, look at, you know, the huge big movies that were expected to be summer blockbusters that died at the on the vine. Sure. I mean, even you know, The Rock and Tom Cruise mm -hmm. have had bombs. So yeah. you can't say that just because you're, you know, at one point it was a Jim Carrey film or you know. Yeah, I mean, whoever the big star is of that time, they get you to basically cut your rate just to be in that movie so that you have maybe a shot 
of getting a better payday later. But if those pay, better paydays aren't coming, it's really very difficult to wow. make a living, to feed your, your family. So uh, to answer your question, new media is now media. It's no longer new. And if you don't know how to make money in it, maybe you should go to a business where you do know how to make money. Mm-hmm. Why don't you make way for people who do know how to make money? Because people are making money. Lots and lots of money. Now, your attack, as I have come to call it because of what was written up in Deadline, among others, is based on an allegation of an improper use of funds, basically. Uh, or I wouldn't say an improper use of funds, but um, improper management. Let me put it that way. Improper management. And you're threatening to blow the whistle. Like, there's been all kinds of stuff going on in this union. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we've, we've uncovered embezzlement and yes. certain things. And, yeah. and people just get a slap on the wrist. And don't worry, it got paid back. Don't worry, the insurance took care of it. Everything is don't worry. Every, no, not, nothing to see here. And We beg to differ. We want to know details. Because it feels like people don't want us to pull on a string. and Because you know what happens when you pull on a string, right? It all comes unraveling. Yep, it all comes. That's right. Yep, yep. And maybe it should come unraveled. But I'm not going to go out there and make false or at least unsubstantiated claims as opposed to other folks that are quick to do that because it's easy to make claims. It's easy to call somebody a crook. Mm-hmm. You know what? If I don't have the proof, I cannot call you a crook. Even if I think you are a crook. Even if deep down inside... Everything's missing, and the only person that could be it is you. But if I can't prove that, I'm not going to be irresponsible enough with your name and reputation as to call you a crook mm-hmm. in public. I don't do that. You know, I have other folks in this race that bless their hearts, they mean well, and they're on to something. But unless you have all your ducks in a row, watch what you say because you lose credibility. Because after a while, people cry wolf too much. And, you know... It's easy, even if you were to win the presidency, to gag the president, to isolate them, marginalize them, and wait till their two-year term runs out, and goodbye. I don't intend to be that person. I intend to work with what we have. And if we find malfeasance, and if we find these problems, then we deal with it as it comes along. But until then, I'm not going to alienate the people that have been working with us because somebody else thinks they're crooked. Talk to... Now, Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, talk to us now as if I'm an actor with a voting right for you. Why should I vote? Why should I have you as my president? I mean, you sound good. You're talking a good game, you know, but give me your, give me, you know, you know what, what is it? Talk a better game with, you know, financial reports and, you know, LM2s and, and um, you know, they, they believe because they're business savvy uh, or because they're administrators or because they've been doing this already for a while, that they should be the president. What I can tell you is that I've been an underdog representative. In other words, I've stuck up for the underdog my entire life. From schoolyard bullies, where I would take the kid that was told 3 o'clock, and I would like, come over here. <laughs> Just follow at 3 o'clock. And I'd get them out through the boiler room, and there was a back exit. I I, I called myself the Harriet Tubman of my elementary school because I ran an underground railroad, okay? <laughs> well, you understand that, right? Yeah, I did. I ran I so many little birds and geese. <laughs> I, I helped them, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, my mother was a union person. My mother would not take any, you know, guff from anybody. She would walk up and start riots just because, you know, action had to get started. She was the number one union organizer from the International Ladies' Government Workers' Union. So social justice is in my lifeblood. I mean, I got a picture of myself over here with Cesar Chavez marching with Cesar. You know, there's something to be said about standing up for those who don't have a voice for themselves. And if anything, what you get in me is someone who's uncorruptible. I've been around way too long to let fame, fortune, or glitzy things sway me. No, I like to sleep at night. I'm not getting any, not much now. But when I do sleep, I sleep with a clean conscience. Because I know I'm doing the best I can. Because I'm protecting this union for myself as a beneficiary, as a participant, and for all of us. Because that's all we have. All we have is each other. And if we don't believe in each other, in our own value, as artists, as artisans, as craftspeople, then we shouldn't be in this union. 
Just go work for yourself. You don't need a union. A union is for people who come together to make sure that we are all for that one and one for all. It's as, it's as simple as that. And that we use the best of our abilities to A, have a ship that runs efficiently. We have a lot of places where I think we can make better business decisions. And you don't have to be a quote-unquote Donald Trump to be a good business uh, savvy person. We have areas where we can cut waste. Like we've been renting for $5 million a year. I mean, we could have bought a building for so long, like the DGA and the Writers Guild. Sure. They have their own buildings. That's building equity. But no, we get told, oh, no, no, we're, 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 not in the, uh, we're not in the real estate business. Excuse me? Excuse me? I don't play that. I don't buy that. Okay. See, there are other folks that say, well, maybe that's because there's kickbacks happening. Maybe that's because somebody's making money somewhere. Right by renting, yeah, I'm going to give you rent. I don't know that. I'm not going to make wait, wait. that claim. You, but you, there you are mean... folks that say that there might be just that kind of stuff going on in a union that has over two billion dollars in its pension fund. And you know, we have. There's a lot of money here, where there's a lot of money there. You know, it's like cheese, where there's a lot of cheese, there's a lot of rats. You mean you got all that and you don't own the building, a building? Wow, we don't own unbelievable in New York. Or, or, or Ella. And, you know, things like that. There are other things. I mean, we spent, you know, I don't know how much I could say. Some of this stuff is privileged information. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that we have a pension plan that rewards the staff much better than it does its own members. When we were supposed to be equal. And this was secret information. This information was dug out. It's not given to us. So... You know, their cap, meaning the most that they, they can make, mm -hmm. is two hundred and ten thousand dollars a year, and they can start pulling that at fifty-five after twenty years of service. I've been vested, qualifying for thirty-five years. I've been an actor for forty years. This will be my forty as a union member. Wow. I've been qualifying for thirty-five years. The most I could make in my pension after paying for it more than twenty years, and ten years later than them at sixty-five, is ninety-six thousand dollars. But they can make two hundred and ten thousand if they if they earned a certain amount. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody does, but mm -hmm. it's a certain thing. At the highest, the highest, their cap is two ten, and that's at fifty five. I'm ninety six. If I wait to sixty five, if I take it out at fifty five, guess what? I have to take a thirty percent cut. It's even less than that. It's ninety six minus thirty percent a year. You know what? By the time I'm 65, that money's not going to be worth that much. No. You can't, you know, no. there are people that say, take it out now. So I don't want to, you know, I love a lot of people on our staff are very good at what they do. Mm -hmm. They've been there for a long time. They know their business. But that they should get a better plan than the people who brought them into it, mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. I think that's really wrong, that we should be penalized for getting our you know, uh, pensions at 55, you know, we have stunt women and men. These are people that literally break their bodies on a, on an almost daily basis. I mean, they get right. bruised and hurt. Yep. Can you imagine being a 55 year old woman having to wait 10 more years to get your full pension, having to qualify when women don't get, you know, you, how many fights with 55 year old and plus old women do you see? How many stunts? I mean, it's just crazy. I was talking to one of our folks and she just really lit me up and like about, you know, knowledge wise about what it's what it's like for them. Stunt coordinators don't get overtime. No. They can be worked, you know, and Robin, too much. Robin Wright and Wonder Woman, she's what, 44? Maybe that's the oldest I've seen who does an action scene like that. I'm 55. Right. You know, so I'm like, hey, rock on. That's close to me. <laughs> But yeah, that's I mean, right. And, you know, and by the way, you look great, fifty-five. I'm oh, about to thank be you. fifty-five. Thank you. My last girlfriend was twenty-eight, so I, I'm getting away with something. So <laughs> hey, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Somebody's got to teach the young. So, um, so all I'm saying is that we have a lot of inequity in our union, mm -hmm. and anytime we bring up anything, any question of the staff, they go, "Look, membership first, attacking the staff." Well, no, we're not attacking the staff. How dare you impugn our motives when we want what's right for everyone? Okay, this is the problem. When you're an honest broker, 
you're always at a, disabil- a disadvantage against people who are, you know, slippery with the facts. Sure. And I feel like our opposition is more obsessed with maintaining their hold on power than they are with doing the absolute best they can for their members. That's a problem. Yeah. Hey, I know you got to get some sleep. Let me ask you, what can the common viewer do to help you on social media? You know, write this ship and get you elected, you know? A, go to membershipfirst.com. Mm-hmm. Very important. Okay. We only have weekend. That's it. This weekend. And I have a split vote because one of the people that used to be in our group went kind of rogue because he didn't feel we were fighting enough. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we don't have votes to make that fight mean anything. Hello. We're trying to do something creative. We're trying to offer an olive branch. And somehow they thought that was betraying the, I mean, it, it really, it, it, it boggles, boggles the mind. Yeah. <laughs> it really does to have certain people claim that we were weak on our opposition when we don't have the votes to do anything anyway. If you keep going to the press over and over, what does that do? When are you going to actually cooperate? So we invited these other folks to work, and you know what? They did not reward us, and that's okay. Because I believe Jesus didn't turn the other cheek just to get hit again, but if anything, to expose the bully. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, to right. expose the devil. Well said. Because if you hit me once, and I turn the other cheek, you hit me again, it's on you now. <laughs> you got Okay, yep. we got a problem, and this is it. What they can do to support our organization is check out the website, see what we say, mm-hmm. and if it resonates with you, if you feel us, if you can tell the difference between spin and substance, then vote for us, vote for the whole slate, and more importantly, well, voting is the most important thing, but as well as that, talk to your friends. Ask people, ask five or ten other folks, did you vote? I understand if you didn't, but please. And even if you did, can you spread the word and tell other folks to vote? Because we need participation. Mm -hmm. We need people. I can't just win against one person. I have to win against a combined two. Mm -hmm. The people Mm -hmm. that would normally vote for me are those who are aware or also those who have been radicalized and informed by our third-party candidate, who's done a great job of informing them of very good things, but may be a little loose on the facts Mm -hmm. about others. So the question is, help us do something that's not been done before. Help us get those apathetic voters. we got to get out there. we got to show them that we can do this, and it's this weekend. Let's pull an upset. Let's surprise folks. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to burn this union down. It's too valuable. I can build it up. I'm a bridge builder, okay? I'll do my damn best to take talent from wherever it lies and to look past petty politics and just go, go. Show me you are worthy of the service and the responsibility you've been given to this union. I will support you no matter where, what political faction you belong to. This is what I want to do. Get people riled up again. Not in a negative sense, but in a way to lift your heart up. To, to be excited, man. Young mm-hmm. folks today need to be talked to. Because a lot of people, they, that union stuff, they, they get the ballot in the mail and frankly it's just boring. Yep. It looks like a bill or something. No, brother. This is your future. Right. Time goes by real quick. I know you know that, Zen, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yes. First hand. Time- <laughs> First hand. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Don't you want to have don't you want to wake up one day and go, what? I got a pension waiting for me? Mm-hmm. How much? A month? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, that's how I felt when I realized that I had this pension. I was like, thank you, Jesus. You know, thank you, yeah. God. Yep. I mean, the point is, there's something for you. And if you don't pay attention and participate, you're betraying yourself and your brothers and sisters in the union. So please, not only vote, but ask of those around you to do it and to do it this weekend, to do it now, Saturday, tomorrow. These votes should be in. They're going to count them on like Wednesday or Thursday at the latest, but you don't want to take any chances. Get that vote in. Get your friends. Post this. Post the voter guide and see what happens. Make that change happen today. Don't wait. Don't say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, because we all know tomorrow never comes. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry. 
How many people told me, oh, I'm sorry, I, 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 I. I uh, threw it out. I didn't. I don't usually vote. I'm like, well, you know, it's okay, but at least make for it. If you didn't vote, or if you already voted for somebody else, that's cool. At least you voted. But make up for the fact that you voted for somebody else, even though now you've figured it out why I would be the best candidate yep. by getting other people to vote the right way. That's all. It's like stick around, but I want to say, Zinsters, hey, stick. Uh, thank you very much for your support and for your tweet outs, and keep tweeting us out when it's as it goes up. Isai, like stick around. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, oh, yeah. you're going to be... I thought you got yeah, yeah, a question or two. Uh, I... Oh, I was, I, was, I was told to hold it 30 minutes by, by your boss. <laughs> I, I am, like, on a roll right now. Okay, so cool. All right, cool. I, okay, cool. I will, right, just cool. for you, because, I mean, this is important. All it right. really is. You got it. All right. Okay, my question is this. Talk about the person at the center of the controversy, because Deadline reported, I'm just asking what I read, Deadline reported that you were on a mission to blow everything up, and you were going to, I mean, they used some incendiary language, okay? So I'm trying to get it from you. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think it, it seems like that to the memory. I'm on a mission to change the culture of the union. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. to more democratic, to make it more responsive. A lot of people think they have a tin air. They go, oh, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah. And that's and it kind of ends there. Or they, they do some, they pay lip service, but they don't follow through. So what I'm saying is right now we have an issue where they, I find they were so desperate to impugn me, ignore my 17 year service where I've scattered it around and focus on something which they claim that I didn't show up to the local boardrooms enough in two years, you know, out of 35 meetings, I only went to two according to them. Again, don't know how they got those specific numbers, but the main job of a vice president is to back up the president. We have Jane Austen as the president and she is so on it. The only two times she thought she may not be able to do it. I was getting ready to run those meetings myself. Mm -hmm. It turns out, False alarm, no problem. She handled it. We're in touch. We talked. I don't have to be there every single day. This union was designed for, created by working actors who have who are on location. Right. It takes a phone call. You don't have to sit there and show up every day. What you have to do is when you show up and wherever you are to have the resolve to fight for your members. See, because I don't care if you go everywhere and you play the part of the president. If you don't fight for me and my family in that negotiation room, you can be there 365 days a year. It doesn't mean anything. So what we're going to fight back with is, interestingly enough, the president, um, uh, president mm -hmm. Gabriel Carter, yeah. who, by the way, has never had, we've never had an ill word towards each other. Right. I have nothing but respect for her. Because she's shown respect for me. But this isn't about her and I. This is about our union. And when people in her faction try to impugn my motives and talk about local board service, they forget the fact that she ran for local board too. And instead of keeping that seat, the very next day or shortly afterwards, she resigned and gave it to an unelectable person. Otherwise, they wouldn't need to have that seat. In other words, she gave it to someone in her party. A power play. Okay. A power play of a sort. Well, it's a way to keep a seat in your in your group. And yeah. that's technically doable, but guess what? If you do that again and run for an office, see, one thing I won't do and I haven't done mm -hmm. is ever resign my seat to just give it to somebody from, from you know, somebody who wouldn't normally be electable. Right. I won't do that. Even if I can't make a you know a two dozen meetings, it doesn't matter. I ran for that seat. I'm going to be in that seat. Whether I'm physically there or not, I pay attention. I know what's up. I know what time of day it is. We know when the important votes are coming in. So it's not like my not being there at every meeting affected any of the business, but mm -hmm. they threw that. And if you're going to throw that at me, then I'm going to say, well, she didn't show up once. Not once. And she gave it away to an unelectable person. You know? Yeah. So if you want to play that, Mm -hmm. And you do that again, we're going to put you up on charges because that's election fraud. That's going for an office, using your, your profile because right. you know that's what people vote right. for. Right. And then showing somebody else in the place. That's not right. 
It's not ethical. It may be technically legal, but mm-hmm. we'll challenge that legality too because it's against you know Department of Labor rules in general. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If you want to mess with me, mm-hmm. oh, I'll mess with you back, mm-hmm. but don't go there because I'd rather keep our union fighting on the same side and fighting each other. Which is my question, because it seems like when I turn around the union over the past eight years that I've observed this, since I started Zenny 62 Media, the union's always been at loggerheads in some kind of way. How can we get the culture so that less of that happens over time? You know, or is it, what, what, what am I missing where that's, that's happening? Listen, I can't guarantee that I'll talk to the other side and, you know, it's all going to be kumbaya. Mm -hmm. I can't because if you're determined, you're determined to be driven by ego or fear or or hatred of the opposition, then, you know, there's only so much I can do. Mm -hmm. But one thing I won't do is I won't play on our differences. I won't exploit it. I will be there and I'll give you chance after chance Mm -hmm. to come home, Mm -hmm. to work together. Mm -hmm. And if you still reject it, then that's on you. But at least I'll know we tried. That's right. That's right. That's and we right. did everything we could. Just like we tried to give them a unanimous front mm-hmm. with these negotiations. Okay? I can't tell you they never did that when we were in power. Quite the opposite. They got a bunch of stars who, by the way, were producers as well, interestingly enough, mm-hmm. to tell our leaders, hurry up and get this thing. Don't strike. You better not strike and get this thing over. These are I, I that remember that. Were, I remember that. I remember that. Right. Yeah, I remember that. I, is yeah. that any way to run a no, union? No, it's no way to run a union. No, not at all. So no. hard. No. And I would call them out. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what? If you're making money as a producer, stay out of it. Stay out of it because your interests are not with the rank and file of the membership that pay the dues every single, you know, half or a quarter of this union. I mean, we're paying into this union not to be railroaded by uh, folks that, you know, are no longer depending on this union to make a living as my viewers are saying stand up for your rights my like these comments coming up on my stream like they, they, they're you're, you're resonating with an audience they're not even actors <laughs> but they love your well, work you know what? but they love your work it, you, you know so they know you they love your work and know you so they're like they haven't seen this side of you so you know you've gained a whole new army <laughs> there you go well, guess what Another reason for members to consider why why they should vote for me because I resonate with an audience outside of our membership. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They know me for delivering performances, and I can't say they're all you know top notch, but I give it my all. And you know, right now I'm getting more love than I've gotten in I can't tell you how much since La Bamba days for <laughs> Ozark. And, and this is a character that is quite despicable. He's a bad guy, but. A lot of people love what we did on that show. They love the show. It's, I, it's, a, it's a different kind of love this time, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a different kind of love, but it's based on this. All my life, I've had to earn a living by delivering. Mm-hmm. And if I'm your president, that's the role of a lifetime as well. It's going to be a two-year term where I'm going to have two years to deliver and get better at it. And I'll be dedicated to that as much as I'm dedicated to any other role, including the role, the most important role, which is as a father. Okay? Yeah. But they're not too they're not too far apart. Because as a father, I have to deliver for my family. Mm-hmm. I have to make sure that my decisions don't cost them in the end, just like with our union. I have to make sure that I make responsible and wise decisions, passionate, but not reckless. Yeah, Sam Morales, my, my computer's burning, man. You set it on a fire. <laughs> it's, I mean it's, what I say, brother. I yeah. mean what I say. That's yeah. how we roll. No, if you don't become president after this, something's wrong with society. I mean, you ought to run for office in general. I'm serious about that. You know, you've got, uh, you've got, a, you've got a belief, a focus, a fire, and a passion, and a name recognition that would get you to the pol- catapult. And we need leaders like you. We really do. You know? Very, I can't very kind of that. you, you know. Very uh, right now, the only thing I'm thinking about, um, I've thought about politics before, but I, I find it a distasteful business where most of your time is spent raising money, mm-hmm. and I'm, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I'm about other things than just asking people for money. As it is with this thing, I hate asking folks for money, but that's another thing. I if you want to help, 
Give us money on our GoFundMe page. There, yeah. I said it. Okay. <laughs> I gotta ask you because, like, tomorrow, I'm here in, in Atlanta, Georgia, and YouTube's having a Creator Day, and I'm a YouTube mm. partner. Uh, what do you see as the future of actors in a YouTube world? And I say that because you know you got YouTube bought the rights to make a movie just recently. Uh, Netflix has got. I don't know how many more subscribers than God. Uh, you know, it's how does that affect what you guys do, and how does that make it more of a challenge for SAG after moving forward? It does. It does. I mean, new media is uh, has been daunting because nobody knew what the the scope was. But mm -hmm. here's what I say about that in general. Okay, mm -hmm. when you go to make a movie, whether it's for Netflix. Amazon, ABC, or, you know, your cousin, own style productions, right? Right. Does the camera cost you any less? Does the light packages cost you any less? So why should actors have to take so much of a cut because other folks don't know how to monetize it? Or maybe they do. I mean, YouTube is, you know, YouTube is not exactly in the poorhouse. Google owns them, by the way. Right. I mean, everybody's making money but the actor and, or the and, artist. And, the and, and yet my revenue, we, we need a union because YouTube's revenue, my revenue has been chopped because of the adpocalypse. We'll all talk to you all. Right. It's like awful. So you guys are setting the, you know, I pray for you all and I root for you and I will help in any way I can because you are, are setting a tone for us too as content creators. I mean, I don't think... I just realized that in listening to you, I thought, wait a minute, he's fighting for me too, in a sense, because you guys are, you're you are, you are the original content creators, okay? Straight out. We're the ghost machines as yeah, the writer. that's it. That's the, the writer's the original content creator. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. we interpret that written word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The director choreographs and conducts it. Right, right. And the producer and the distributors make it a viable business. So we need each other. You need the the platform of YouTube. Mm -hmm. We need that ability to reach hundreds of millions. But YouTube also needs us. And there's got to be right. a way where it's right. a win-win situation. Right. One of the things I have a really big problem with mm -hmm. is I don't know because of a lot of um, suppressed information that I've shared on my social media, like Facebook and such, uh, I, I go there, I go deep, not because I believe everything I post, but because I believe it's important to consider, right? Yep, uh, people, Well, uh, how could you post that? That's irresponsible. I go, no, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. Uh, you don't pay me to be your editor. Nobody pays me a dime. I post so much stuff that informs people in general. Now, if you have a problem with it, if you find that it's not real, show and prove, brother. Mm -hmm. Show and prove. Yep. That's where that's what we're here to do. I'm not getting paid to post this stuff. So this is how I learn. If I post something that gets attacked, two things I think about. Either it's not true and it's obvious, or maybe it's the truth hurts. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. True. Hey, oh, you know, let's not get it twisted there. It's not, you know, things aren't the way they are. There's not one way to look at things. There are many ways. So, mm -hmm. so when it comes to new media, I know a friend of mine, Luke Rudowski. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We changed. That guy is a real, like, what do you call it? Guerrilla journalist, mm -hmm. you know? It, ca it came to a point where Google started, um, they messed with his ability to earn. They messed with his algorithms they did something where all of a sudden hmm. they shrunk his ability to earn so what i was saying that i'm now getting back to is that mm -hmm. i don't know if what i've posted and how it changed and it challenges the establishment mm 